Hello, beautiful girls. We are gonna talk about today on the Women Rock Show, what really counts in life. are going to talk about all things woman and all things what God says about us. And so there are so many neat things that we get to chat about here on this show. So welcome. We're glad you've joined us today. Um, we have been pressing in and talking over Proverbs 31. We thought what a better way to start the show in talking about who a woman is, what God says that we are, and all the definitions of what he has created us to be. And so I hope that you are, will enjoy what God has for you today. Get your Bible out, get your notes out, because God has something for you. So we're going to press in right now. We're going to talk about what really counts in life. So Proverbs 31:30 in the New King James Version, it says, Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Charm. When I think about this word, I actually think about that old TV show, you know, where all the witches were in it, and I'm like, ugh, and it scares me, and it just makes me feel like I don't want any part in that. Because charm is actually the definition of being deceitful, false, and a lie. And so charm is deceitful, and that's what the Bible tells us. So every time that this is happening, when you feel like, you know, somebody is like charming you and, and bringing favor to something that shouldn't be, it's probably a counterfeit to the truth of what it is. And yet the verse also talks about that beauty is passing. A lot of us are going, no, I'm 42 years old at this point. I have three children and I'm married and I'm actually enjoying the things of life. And I'm learning how to be in my own skin. And I wish I would have learned this earlier in life. I wish that this would have been something that I would have embraced a little bit better. So for all of you under 42 years old, embrace your bodies now. Don't try and be something you're not. Own every stretch mark. Own every dimple. Own every place that you are because God has wonderfully and fearfully made you and he cherishes everything about you. And if the enemy can get us to be focused on what we aren't and what we should be, we are taking away from what God is speaking into us and showing us who we are and who he's created us to be and to carry out. I think the most beautiful thing about a woman is that there's so many different shapes and sizes and versions and personalities of who we are. And all of us, when we come together, we can be in a room and we can relate on so many topics no matter what background of life we've come from and where, we've come, where we're going because we know what it's like to be a woman. When a man tries to tell me how to be a woman, that doesn't work for me. That's why this world right now that is trying to call woman anything that you identify as, that's not what God says. God says that he made us, that he created us, that he put in us the DNA that he has formed us to be, that he, we were created in our mother's womb and that what we carry is very special. So this reminds me of when we walk into a room and we can judge a room. Have you ever just kind of scanned a woman up and down and you've kind of been like, mm, I know how she is. Well, listen, that is not right of you. And you need to repent of that and you need to change the way you do that. Because when you walk into a room of women, you need to look at the beauty of what Christ created. It may not be what you think it should be. But I'm telling you right now, God has created every woman on this earth and he has poured into them a piece of himself. And God sees the beauty of womanhood. But not just that, God sees not just the outer appearance, so we get stuck on these things. I mean, they have every surgery out there now to fix if you don't like your nose, if you don't like your chin, if you don't like your face, if you don't like your wrinkles, you can get rid of those. You can blow your lips up big when you were born with no lips. I mean, you can get new butt cheeks. You can get boobs. I mean, you could do it all. All why? So that you can become something that God never made you to be? How about we just own who we are and we step into all that God has given us to be? You know, I really had to work through this and I, and I would look at my outer appearance and I would work so hard at what the outside looked like when I was so broken on the inside. This can be actually a, a sign that there's something broken on the inside and that we need to go to the Father and that we need to ask him what is going on on the inside that I feel that I need to make my outside perfect. And God will show you and begin to say, hey, these things have happened to you and they've developed these 
um, insecurities and these weaknesses, and I want to heal them. I want to take those things out of you, and I want to put my word in you. I want to show you the beauty of what you see as ugly, that I see it as beautiful. You see, when we look at something through our natural lenses, it's always going to be flawed. But when we begin to see something through the eyes of Jesus Christ, we begin to see the beauty of all that he has created us to be. And so when we step into all these natural broken things of this world that will never satisfy us, you're going to fall short. But this woman that understands who God is and who he made her to be. So this reminds me of the time in the Bible when God sent Samuel to anoint a king. And Samuel went to anoint David's brother because David's brother was handsome and he was big in stature and he seemed like somebody that would be the perfect role for a king, right? We have our ideas of who should be leaders and what they should look like and what we expect from them. And God's response to him was this. Go with me to 1 Samuel 16, 7. And it says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. That's good news for us today. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. You see, I wore my heart necklace today because... God is after our hearts, and sometimes when we look at our outer appearances and those things that are fleeting and those personalities that want to pretend like they're a certain person and, and act like they have it all together, but really, listen, girlfriend, if you don't have it all together, just be truthful about it. And then go to the Father and ask him to help you get it together because you will never be able to fix you without him. You have to have God in your life to help you fix those things. And maybe there's the physical features that you're insecure about and you don't like these things. I totally get that. This has been a fight of my life. And you might look at me and go, oh, really? But honestly, every single person I know struggles with their body image because this is Satan's attack on women is to tear us down to break us down to not celebrate who we are and all that God has made us to be but what if we turn the flip the script on him what if we turn this around and we said you know what I'm going to own who I am and I'm going to be happy with everything that I am maybe it's not what I wanted it to be and it doesn't look like the girl in the magazine or some of those girls at the beach but I'll tell you my inner man is happy and I'm confident and I know who I am and see Satan understands that when a woman is confident when she is comfortable in her skin and when she knows who her God is that she is dangerous and he better watch out and so he works really hard to bring us into places of insecurity, bring us into places of false truth in our lives, to bring us into places of isolation and devastation and rejection will keep you there. And God is here today telling me that charm is deceitful. Girls, know that you're being charmed by the enemy and know that those people that are talking to you and those voices that you're hearing about yourself are not of God because God says you are beautiful, you are wonderfully and fearfully made, that you have been chosen by him and called by him. And the voices in this world will say you're not good enough, your nose just needs to be adjusted, your voice is annoying, your, your hair is too big, your hair is too straight, your hair is too short, your hair is too thin, you're losing all your hair. Oh, you're, you have cellulite, you're big, you're small, you're too skinny, you have no boobs, which defines you as a woman, or whatever. The world has a judgment on everyone. And the reality is, is we have to cast down those vain imaginations. We have to stop those words being spoken into our lives and step into all that God has called us to be. And a woman who fears the Lord, she is powerful, she is mighty, and she is strong. You know, I really had to face this over my life. And I watched my daughter actually struggle through this. She had friends in her life, and they were speaking these things over her. She went through a time and a season where she didn't like who she was, and, and these evil suicidal thoughts were coming at her. And I was watching her beat herself up in her body image. I was watching her be obsessive about, like, her clothing because she was told her clothing was weird. And these people in her life ended up not being in her world any longer, and we were able to get her to a place of health. And she pressed into the Lord, and she really got herself back into a healthy place. And this was years ago. Just recently, I noticed that she was really like counting her calories and working out all the time and, and just obsessing in a way um, over being that perfect kind of picture of what she was thinking in her head. And, and I was concerned because I didn't want her to obsess over things that weren't important. And so I asked her, what are, where's this coming from? And she said, I don't really know, Mom. It just kind of popped up, and now I'm feeling really bad about anything I put in my mouth, and I'm feeling bad about anything. And I'm like, that's not of God. 
God doesn't bring con, con, condemnation to us. He convicts us of our sins when we're in sin, but he doesn't bring condemnation. Condemnation comes from Satan. And so you're feeling bad about things that are not of God. And so she couldn't figure it out. I didn't know where it was coming from. So I decided that as mom, I was going to go and I was going to walk away and pray. I prayed for a few days and the Lord began to reveal to me that this is a curse on woman. This started in the garden. Then this is not just in just our family, but he showed me the women in my family and down the row how we've all struggled this with this. And it's come out in different sizes and versions of us. And it's happened in many different ways. And it's a curse of the enemy to tear us down and to bring us into a place of insecurity so that the devil could come in and steal and rob our joy and all that God has put into us. And so I... I said, Lord, what do I do? And he goes, you go talk to her about it. And you talk to her about your insecurities. And then you guys need to break this curse over your life. So I went into her room and we talked about it. And she goes, that's it, mom. That's it. This just bears witness with me. So we prayed together. We broke that curse off of our family and off the next generations that are coming. And then we said, we've got to press in and find some scriptures to speak over ourselves. And so actually, I was in her room just recently this week. And I saw she has um, a mirror. And so she posts these scriptures on her mirror. And she reads them over herself every day. So Proverbs 31.25 says, She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of her future. That is a mighty woman of God. Psalms 139.14 says, Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. I like that. That your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. Did you ever think about yourself as a marvelous workmanship of God? That's a thought. That when you beat yourself up, And when the devil comes in and lies to you that you no longer are actually speaking life over what God created in you, that's scary. We don't want to curse ourselves, girls. Let's change our speech over how we see ourselves. Let's change our speech over our children. Let's pour life into our girls and not let the things of this world and the images of what the world says a woman should be. Let's give them the image of what God says a woman should be. And a woman is beautiful, but a woman who fears the Lord, this is the key in this verse, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. You know, God talks about the fear of God many times. And when we talk about the fear of God, we're not talking about like fear like a scary movie. I know that fear seems that we've just been through this pandemic. We've gone through all these things. That is so fear-driven. If they could stir fear up in people, it will paralyze us. Fear will keep us. That's not the fear I'm talking about. The fear of God that I'm talking about is different. It's like the fear of a parent and a child. And not an abusive parent who has been wrong and bad, but a parent who has been a godly parent. And maybe you have not experienced this, but this is who your God father is in your life. He's not going to come and beat you, but he's going to bring you a truth and he's going to say, you've got to change and you've got to deny your flesh and follow me and I need you to fix yourself. And he's firm about it and he's confident about it and God requires change in us as his children, right? And so when my dad would correct me as a young girl, it would be like, Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going to go fix it. You know, and I had a healthy fear of my dad. When he would say something, It would happen. And so that is called authority. I know that's something that we so have not been wrapped around or understand in our society or our culture. That's like a whole nother message, and maybe we'll get into the believer's authority after all this. But it is something that God is asking a woman. So when a woman understands who her God is, and when she understands the power that he carries— that he is the one who spoke and the world existed, that he is the one who created her out of a rib in Adam, that he understands who she is, that when she knows who her God is and that she has a healthy fear of God, that this is a confident woman and that when the enemy comes in with those thoughts, you're not good enough, you're not beautiful enough, you're not a good enough mom, you're not this, you're not that, that woman who fears the Lord goes, "Mm, I know what God said about me. No, that's not true. I know who my God is. I'm actually confident in that. And I can stand and I can walk it out and I can be all that God has called me to be. It takes time to get there, girls. So you may not be there yet. But the more that you press into God, the more that you begin to learn his word and then you take it in and you allow it to become your truth, you are going to be changed from the inside out and you are going to be an image of Jesus Christ to your family, to your husbands, to your community, to your church, And listen, most of all, to yourself. And you're going to be pleasing to God. A woman who fears the Lord is pleasing to God. 
that she's, she runs after and she longs to be not pleasing to man, not man pleasers, but God pleaser. You know, God talks about what the fear of God does in our lives. In fact, there's so many scriptures on it, but I pulled a few of them out for you. So let's just see what happens when we reverence and we are in awe and we have a respect for God and a fear of God. Proverbs 1, 7 says that the fear of God brings us knowledge. Proverbs 8, 13 says that the fear of God teaches us what is evil and how to hate it. Did you know that you're supposed to hate what is evil? What is evil? Anything contrary to the word of God. And when it's evil, you can hate it. Those seem like harsh words, but God teaches us what to hate. Proverbs 9, 10 says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like I need wisdom from heaven because I don't know what to do next. Well, then a woman who fears the Lord knows that she can go to her father, that she could submit to him, and she could wait on a word from him, and that God will answer her, he will direct her, and he will equip her to do what it is she's called to do. You might be afraid to step out and do something in your life. You might be wondering, where am I going to get the courage to stand? Girlfriend, you've got this because you are a woman of God and a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised and God will honor you and he will back you in this. Proverbs 14, 27 says, The fear of God is life and without it brings death. That's amazing that when we fear God, it actually bursts life in our, in our community and in our world. But without the fear of God, it will bring sin in it will bring in curses, it will bring in unhealthy people that will take you down and pull you down, and they will lead you to hell. But if you fear God, it will keep you, it will keep your soul, it will keep your heart, and it will keep your mind. And you will, for the long run, make it through this earth, and you will live in eternity with Christ. That's a beautiful thing. Second Samuel talks about the fear of the Lord in verse 23, chapter, I'm sorry, chapter 23, verse 3, and it says that the fear of God helps leaders rule. And that if they fear God, see, God directs the leader. He's going to teach a leader how to lead. If they will seek him, God will give them direction. Second Chronicles 26, 5 says that the fear of God will lead you to prosper. Maybe you've been busted and disgusted and broken down and you're going, I don't know what's happening. Well, maybe you need to fix the fear factor. Maybe you need to get in there and find out who your God is and who your provider is and what he says about tithing because God has a plan and there is blessings connected to how God wants things done. And when we have a healthy fear of God and we do things God's way, we get God results. When you do things your way, you're going to get your results. Matthew 10, 28 says, The fear of God keeps our souls. Thank you, Lord. What, it, what he can do in that. Because listen to me. This verse is powerful. I want you to go read actually the whole chapter of Matthew 10 because this verse though says you should fear God because he will keep your soul or he can send it to hell. I don't know about you, but I don't want to play games. Go back and read Matthew 10 for yourself. I think that the point of all of this and all these verses and all that God is trying to say is that a woman who fears the Lord, that she walks in his ways and that she will reap from her sowing, and she will reap blessings and honor and favor because she fears the Lord. So let's strive to be those women today. Let's seek God and all that he has. Let's love what God loves. Let's follow the Lord at every point and way in our lives. Women, this is what God is asking, that he would be the final authority in our lives. A woman of God, a Proverbs 31 girl, knows that God has the final say in all of it, and that you are beautifully and wonderfully made, and that even though our beauty is passing and we see our wrinkles as getting old and our face dropping and all those things, that God actually doesn't see it the way we do. He sees it as beauty. He sees it as wisdom. He sees it as a life lived well. So let's live life well. Let's celebrate who we are. Let's be comfortable in our own skin. Let's not compare ourselves to other people, but let's only be pleasing to God. So girls, I hope you got something from this scripture. I love you so much. Some of you may be sitting here and wondering, wow, how do I know this God you're talking about? I want to know him. I want him to be in my life. It's very simple. All you have to do is ask Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life. He's a gentleman. He's not going to berate his way into your life. You have to invite him. He gave us free will. And so this is how it's going to go. I'm going to pray a prayer and ask Jesus to come into my heart. I've already done this, but I'm going to lead you in it. And so you're going to repeat it after me. And when you say this prayer, if you miss a word, it's not about the words of your, of your mouth and what you forgot or maybe said wrong. It's not about that. It's about the attitude of our heart because God is after 
our hearts. And so today, if you've been running from God instead of to God, and you want to get right and quit backsliding, I'm talking to you. If you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life, and this will be a first-time commitment for you, today I'm talking to you. Maybe you've been wondering about God, and you're like, hmm, I want to have this personal relationship she's talking about. Today, stop wondering, stop waiting, because God is calling you home. He was the one who created you, and he's calling you back to him. And so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to pray this prayer, so go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes and repeat after me. Dear Father God, I come before you today, and I ask that you would forgive me of my sins, that you would wash me clean. Holy Spirit, I invite you to come and live and dwell within me. Jesus, I confess you as Lord. I pray that you would lead me and guide me and show me how to live in your way. Today is the day that I leave hell behind and I'm headed for heaven. I have a new future. I have a new hope. My past is in the past and I have a new destiny ahead of me. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me, for saving me. Thank you for being the Lord of my life. Amen. Well, if you just prayed that prayer, that is amazing. Heaven just is rejoicing right now over you. And so I don't want to just leave you out there like, what do I do now that I prayed that prayer? You can't do life alone. You can't just go back to what you used to live in. You can't go back to the way that you lived. You've got to get into a good Bible-believing church. If you're here in the local area, I'd love for you to join us here at the Rock Church and World Outreach Center in San Bernardino. But if you can't do that, then there's great local churches near you. You want a Bible-believing church, okay? And then you're also going to need to get into the Word, and I want you to find a Bible. If you need a Bible, you you can call us at the church um, and or go to www.rockchurch.com and press this little button. I think it's the I just get to know God button. And if you press that button, we will send you a whole bunch of information. We'll tell you what to do next now that you've been saved and how to get connected. We don't want to just leave you out there by yourselves. We love you so much. Thank you for joining us today. Listen, you be a woman who fears the Lord, and I will see you next time on Women Rock. Love you.